Hey guys, welcome to the show. And today I want to give you my first impression of the Mint Instacon RF670. Uh, after Photokina 2018, I actually met with Gary from Mint and he loaned me uh, one of these models. It says Display um, 2. That's what I think it says. And it's not actually a beta testing prototype or anything like that that was handed around before, you know, Matt Day, uh, me, John Drew, and other people got some. This is actually from the production line. It was given to me to test and make videos for you guys. After spending around a week, um, a little less than a week with it, I have to give you my first impressions and what I feel about this camera. Uh, I will do a proper review down the road, but just kind of a feel of what it is to have this camera in your hand as it's starting to ship to everyone that bought it or pre-ordered it, and maybe people are wondering. So first of all, um, the size and the weight of this camera feel like quality-wise. Like if you've ever held uh, a Fuji GF670 or maybe something like a Mamiya 7 kind of style, it has a nice feel and weight to it. It's not too big. It does look kind of like a sort of, um, you know, Mamiya 7 with no lens on it as it's a folder. It has a very nice plastic kind of leather feel to it. As you can see, this little grip is actually extremely comfortable and helps you hold the camera without having any issue with that. Um, so yeah, grips and feels are awesome. I have to say, top-notch quality, doesn't feel plasticky or cheap in any way as many other, you know, instant cameras uh, feel like. Actually, one of the things that they say is that they managed to make a quality camera that shoots instant. Not a toy camera that shoots instant or a quality camera that's digital or quality camera that's just film. So this is the first kind of sort of quality camera that shoots instant film and gives you manual controls. So to me, this is probably the first instant camera that I'm really excited to have in my hands, except for the old traditional Polaroids. But honestly, my biggest problem is Polaroid Originals or Impossible Film never really render the colors I like. So this takes Fuji Instax wide. So the load goes in the back. So as you can see, Fuji Instax wide has pretty much the same price per shot as the mini and the square. So why not shoot bigger? Um, the size is almost like a six by nine format. So this could be considered a medium format camera that shoots Instax instead of just being uh, instant camera. Once we've talked about the body and the feel, let's talk about some of the features. First thing, tripod mount, which is awesome. Second, batteries takes two double A's, which is really nice. Bat double A's are everywhere. So if you run out of batteries, you can just pop them in. Positive, negative, it's actually written inside like every single gadget in the world, but it's actually very nice. The lid feels nice and stays there, so you can't really lose it. Not easy to open. Has these two little straps on the side, so it's a side hanger. It's kind of like the Leica M5 Mamiya 7 first version. The second version had one strap lug here and then these two, so that's awesome. It has the... Um, uh, it's like an audio jack for flashes, so you can use this in a studio, flasher strobes or anything you need, so that's pretty nice. Uh, most instant cameras would never have this feature. Then we have on this side just the grip, um, which is fairly easy. On the back, we have this to open the film. I'm loaded, so I can't do that right now. Has a little display here, has the uh, rangefinder here separated from the viewfinder, so rangefinder here, and this here that you're seeing is actually a little late that will flash either green or red depending on the conditions, and this is the viewfinder. So what happens with the viewfinder? There's frame lines inside the viewfinder, you can see them there. These frame lines actually um, are kind of dim if you're looking into somewhere dark. So if I'm pointing down in the studio, I can't see the frame lines, but the moment I pop them up to my eye, it becomes very, very obvious. So daylight, you'll have no problem, but if you're shooting indoors, you're not gonna see the frame lines. That's the only concern I have with the viewfinder. It's kind of nice and bright, easy to see, easy to compose, if you see the frame lines. It does have a second set of frame lines when you close up, so kind of like parallax correction. It doesn't have parallax, but you can actually take that as it is. 
Then the rangefinder window, as it's closed now, it just is scrambled, but let me open it in a second. Um, then we have here ejection for the film. This display too is only because it's a, a display model for me to talk about. If you bought one, it wouldn't have it. Name of the brand, actually very nice quality material. This is the little flash which pops here. So that's the flash bar, which is very nice. You can click it back in. Then you have your manual settings. So you can use automatic exposure plus one minus one bulb auto and then uh, off if you want to have it off or shutter speeds manually from 500th of a second all the way to one second. Um, Gary told me that if you press the shutter twice and bulb it becomes T as in time and you can also have rare flash which usually means that the flash will sync at the end of your exposure so not at the beginning of your exposure if I'm not wrong and then it has an off I've actually never set it to off and so far no problem with batteries. As I said, double A's are fairly easy to come by, so I'm not concerned. Um, shutter release, so this is not only a screw mount for your shutter, but also where you actually take pictures, doesn't do anything when it's closed. This film advance is one of the funnest things I've seen and probably one of the best ideas they had. It makes the camera look like a real actual film camera, not an instant camera, because you're shooting and then when you want to eject, you have to advance. So advance is not advancing, it's ejecting. So you can do multiple exposures and then eject. So as many as you want. Uh, I'm not a much of a person of multiple exposures, but Marco from Analog Things actually got this camera for a while, went around Photokina, took some awesome double exposures, which I wish I could share with you guys in this video, but I don't have the shots here. But yeah, that's pretty cool. You can do multiple exposures and then eject. Then to open the camera, you just have to kind of push in here and it opens. So when you pull it out, it looks like it won't lock. So what you have to do is push these little metal bars all the way to the end on both sides. So they are as straight as you can. So there you go. You see straight and straight. That is very important as in the film plane and the lens uh, plane should be very, very parallel. If not, focus is going to be shifted because as I said, this is almost like a mini large format camera in terms of circle. So be aware of that. That is one of the reasons that the lens is actually an f 5.6 like you can see there. And it goes in clicky stops 6.7, 8, 11, uh, 16 and 22. So manual aperture, you can choose your aperture there. Focusing is done here with a very nice little helical. Goes down to 75 centimeters, which is really nice for, you know, a camera like this. Actually, I have a Fuji uh, GW680 and it only focuses down to a meter. So that is a pretty big plus, 0 0.75. Um, very nice and smooth, very easy to focus. Um, but that is the lens. It says it's made with glass, which I guess I'll believe them because I can't tell you about it. It has a filter thread of 37 millimeters. Um, and then the viewfinder patch um, is very, very nice. Actually, it's kind of hard to do while I'm shooting video, but it's easy. It's fairly easy to focus. Look, that's minimum focus. I'm focused on you guys on my screen. Uh, so the rangefinder window and the viewfinder is not that hard to recompose. You kind of focus and then check. If you're used to the Leica Barnack models, it's exactly pretty much the same. Instead of being on a vertical arrangement, it's on a horizontal arrangement. So that's awesome. If you want to pop the flash open, boop, you're ready for flash. If you want to close it, you can close it. And now let's turn it on. So on the back, we have the little display that's here. You can see the frames that are, you know, left six battery, three little battery, you know, amounts. So full battery, two thirds, one third and gone. Uh, battery, I'm sure is pretty good on this thing, but I can't tell you as I haven't shot enough to kill the batteries. Um, one thing that is included is the fact that if you want to shoot um, and there's way too much light as the shutter max speed is 500th of a second, it'll actually give you an indication of what neutral density filter you should be using. It'll give you a two, a four, or an eight. So that means the filter factor of two, four, or eight. 
um, just made a bayonet style filter, uh, neutral density filters for this, which you can fit and actually just shoot with it on. If it's sunny, it'll just max out a 500 of a second and use the neutral density filter to cut down the amount of light. So that is really very smart. Uh, another thing that happens is if there's too much light or too little light, you'll see that little, you see, I'm in good exposure, but if there's too much light or too little light, let me see if I can block it. You see the red light there, green? Let me see if I can, you see the red light there? So that means there's not enough light. So it's letting you know it's way too underexposed. But the moment I give it green light, that means you can shoot. That's really easy to see when you have your eye on it. So basically when I'm looking at the viewfinder on the bottom, I can see a little green light. So that's good to shoot. One huge plus that I have to give um, Mint is the fact that those neutral density filters I don't have with me, when you mount one, you can actually fold the camera with it. That wasn't possible on the GF670 from Fuji, not possible on the Plowbell Machina. Um, so yeah, that's a humongous um, thing. So actually the Machina, when you fold it, the lens is out. So no, forget about the Machina. So yeah, basically that's my experience with it. Um, auto exposure or using the light meter in the camera has worked fine with me indoors and outdoors. If you want to check some pictures, I put some on my Instagram at Farokina, but um, I'll probably post some through social media as time goes. But the camera feels really nice. It's very, very well constructed. It doesn't feel flimsy or like things are just going to break off. Of course, I would not want to drop a camera like this, but it feels very well built. I have to say the uh, Mint team has made a great job on the camera. Do understand that this is basically the size, as I said, of a medium format camera, almost large format camera in terms of size. It's like a two by three uh, shot on the back, two by three inches, almost. So yeah, that is why the lens is 5.6. If you're waiting to see how sharp this could be, I've shot it at F8, F11 outside, and it looks sharp, but the problem is more with the film. Fuji Instax is not exactly a film that looks tack sharp usually so it's more a problem with the medium i am going to test something about sharpness which i won't say yet but i'm pretty excited about how to test it and show it with you guys to fold it you have to push this little lever down so it unblocks that and now you just have to push it down it does make that clickety noise sometimes so don't be too concerned but yeah once you do that you have to focus it at infinity because if the lens is out, as you can see there, it won't fold nicely. So put it to infinity and then push it down and it locks. So that's how the main camera looks. Uh, very nice and folded. It feels, as I said, really nice. I have had a really nice time with it. My impressions are this is a quality item. I know it's not cheap. It's gonna be around $800, $900 once it's op openly um, open to sale, basically, at their store. So yeah, not a cheap camera, but if you're taking Instax seriously and you want full control and you miss peel apart, which we don't know if it'll come again and at the quality we had it, this is a great option, very fun. You can use strobes, you can use a little fill inch flash if you're outdoors. You can use the auto exposure plus one or minus one, which is great. And yeah, um, that's all I have to say from this mint. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna be reviewing it thoroughly. I'm gonna do put it to different tests in the studio, outdoors, multiple exposures, things like that. But yeah, if meanwhile you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to do my best to answer them. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video.